Hey, everybody, there's gold in them there hills. Haven't you heard? This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, welcoming you to another one of my Subscriber Tuesday videos. I've been asked by subscribers quite a bit about gold mining stocks. One subscriber who goes by P Zide or Zeed, Z E I D, said, Hey, Chuck, thanks for sharing your knowledge and information. I would be interested in a video about mining companies like Rio Tinto, BHP Group, Vale, and Polymetal International. If that's a sector you know something about, greetings from Germany. And then I have a very persistent subscriber, and I, I like that, by the way, Ty Jameson. Ty says, teach us about miners, and he gives me all kinds of emojis here asking me to please teach him about miners. And then I didn't, and been a couple of weeks went by, so Ty came back and he said, you don't like miners? You never talk about mining stocks. Why? Well, Ty, I'm going to go ahead and um, answer your request, and I am going to talk about mining stocks in today's video. Now, the, before I get into the video itself, I want to talk a little bit about investing styles and strategies and philosophies. Okay, I'm a value investor. They also call me Mr. Valuation. As such, my investment strategy is primarily to be a long-term investor in great businesses that I can buy at attractive valuations where I can let the business enrich me rather than the stock market. That's a very strong and I believe repeatable philosophy that I've followed for almost 50 years now. There's also other approaches to investing. For example, you can speculate in things. And with speculations, you don't necessarily intend to hold the stock for years and years to come because the key is, you know, time is on your side as a value investor if you're buying good companies. And so I tend to look for companies that have predictability and consistency, especially in their historical operating results, which I can learn from the past. But most importantly, I'm looking to hope that that consistency or try, I shouldn't say hope, try to determine whether that consistency will go ahead and, and, and you know, apply to the future as well. And that's where research and due diligence comes in. The problem with mining stocks is they tend to be very cyclical and they tend to be very focused. For example, as I'll show you here in the video, gold stocks tend to be very, very highly correlated with the price of gold. And they're, they're more commodity type investments. Now, they are operating companies, but because of the price of gold is so volatile, they also tend to be very cyclical. And I'll show you that here as I go through the video. So let's go ahead and get into the video and let's look at the portfolio review here that I built called mining. And I've got 10 stocks that I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm going to cover BHP Group, PLC, BH, which is the symbol BBL, and then BHP Group Limited. And I'm not sure exactly what the distinction, both of them are A-rated. Rio Tinto, as I was asked, Barrett Gold, which is one of the biggest and more prominent of all the gold miners, Kinross Gold Corp, Val, Yansu Coal Mining Company, which is a miner, but not necessarily a, a precious metal, which all the others are here. And then Polymetal International, B2 Gold Corp, and Polymetal International, again, on a different exchange. And I'm really not sure what's going on, because one of the things that, you know, I was asked with P. Zide was, you know, do I know much about them? And the answer is, I don't know a lot about these. So I want to say that to you right up front in this video. What I'm going to share with you is strictly what I see by looking at the Fast Graphs Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. And I'm going to evaluate these stocks based on their fundamentals and their fundamental histories. And the problem is very few of these stocks am I willing to actually spend the time to do the necessary research and due diligence because I don't like the types of stocks they are. There's some very specific types of stocks that you're going to find in the mining sector. So let's go ahead and look at them. Let's start with this Yansu coal mining. And what I want you to see here is the unpredictability and inconsistency of the business. I'm using adjusted operating earnings here and looking at this company going all the way back to 2001. Now, what I want you to notice is how cyclical it is. Now, from 2001 through the Great Recession up through the top of 2011, the company had some very, very strong growth. All right. What it did have was some very, a lot of inconsistency in the dividends. Now, the company is trading at a very, very low multiple, a P.E. of only 5.67. That gives it an earnings yield of 17.6 percent, which I would normally salivate over, a dividend yield of 4.19 percent. And estimates for some very, very powerful growth for this fiscal year, followed by flat growth, actually slightly negative growth in 2022, and just slight increase in 2023. 
All right. Now, if I look at the long term historical performance of the company, a $10,000 investment made in 2000 would have thrown off over $43,878 in dividends, which is more than 10 times what the market did, or approximately 10 times what the S&P 500 would have. And it would have turned 10,000 into 109, giving you a 12.3% growth rate or annualized capital appreciation plus 14.1% total annualized rate of return if you consider growth plus dividends, but dividends not reinvested. However, things can change dramatically when you're looking at, at a company like this because of the cyclicality. If I shorten this time frame, let's say to the last, let me try 14 years here, I'm going to go with 13 years, where the stock was kind of peaking here and look at performance. Now we've got a negative performance since 2010. I have less dividends than the S&P 500, and I have an overall negative 2.5% annualized rate of return. It's that cyclicality that's troublesome. Now, if you like miners and are interested in investing in mining companies, if I look at the near-term future of this company, it looks extremely attractive. I'll give you that. A very, very low P.E. ratio, a very, very high earnings yield, and a 4.19% dividend yield. Now, if I look at it from the normal P.E. ratio of only about seven, I would still have very strong rates of return, assuming this company goes back to that P.E. ratio. Now, let's look at that from the historical perspective again, and let's shorten the time frame here for really the last five or six years here, and you'll see that seven P.E. ratio that I'm talking about, even though earnings growth was strong. So that's something you ought to consider just because this company is expected to grow, you know, maybe getting back to a 7 P.E. ratio is plausible. But again, the unpredictability of a company like this is something you want to deal with. Now, the other thing is, let's see if we got anything on operating cash flows on these companies, because the reality of it here, the dividend yield looks very enticing. OK, I don't have any estimates for cash flow going forward, but as you can see, the cash flows have covered the dividend for the most part. They didn't cover them in 2013, and operating cash flows have been dropping, you know, for the last couple of years. So, you know, I consider those things issues and problematic. Let's move on to Vail here. Vail is classified as a steel company. The company um, with its subsidiaries produces and sells, this is company profile I'm reading to you, iron ore and iron ore pellets for use as raw materials in steel making in Brazil and internationally. The company operates through ferrous metals, base metals, and coal segments. So again, what we're looking at here is a, I guess you'd call it a minor, but very, very cyclical. Notice how we had strong earnings growth and then just collapsing earnings growth. The dividend is all over the place. Once again, if I look at long-term performance, it looks very, very good if I go all the way back to 2002. But if I shorten the time frame, all of a sudden we end up with negative performance since 2011. Again, these companies are very, very tricky. This is not what I was describing in the beginning of my video here. This is not what you would call a classic buy and hold company. As I always say, it's a market of stocks, not a stock market. And the reality of it is these companies are very, very cyclical, very, very hard to predict. They have very spotty dividend records, and that's something you should consider. They are probably more oriented towards trading, the short-term trading, where you really want to invest in them when you think they're cheap, buy them, maybe hold them for a while, and then sell them if you make a decent profit. But very, very hard to have any consistent predictability. The next one is Rio Tinto, Diversified Metals and Mining. Once again, you see an enormous amount of cyclicality. Now, there has been growth, net growth over the time frame. But look at the dividend and look at the earnings here. Just see how unpredictable this company is. Once again, it has a decent track record long term relative to the market. It's essentially outperformed it slightly on capital appreciation significantly outperformed it, however, in dividend income, which gave it a strong 9.5% annualized rate of return since December 29th, 2000, versus the S&P 7.3% return. But once again, if you shorten the time frame here, due to the cyclicality, you get very anemic returns since 2010. Okay, the reality of it is it's very, very, you've got to play the cycles here, and you've got to really be paying attention. The dividend record is... Not as bad as some of the others. It's actually had some good dividend growth and only reduced it one time, which was 2016. 
But again, it's not as predictable as I personally like to see. So that's Rio Tinto. The next one is Polymeta International. Now, here's the problem with this company. It's a gold stock, okay? It actually has a very good history in some ways. If I shorten this time frame just to the last several years, they've grown earnings. The dividend has performed. If I look at performance over this time frame, They've produced very good income, and they've, I'm going to say, came close to matching the S&P. They slightly underperformed the S&P in growth, but they outperformed it very slightly in total return when you add dividends and growth. Now, here's the, the thing. The dividend has been very strong going forward here. We don't have any estimates, even if I go and I check companies like Yahoo!, Okay, Yahoo gives no analyst estimate is not available. So in the case of a company like Polymetal International, you're on your own. You're looking at this company and you're going to have to go in and dig. Now, you can do that several different ways. And one is to go into the company's website, for example, and try to learn as much as you can about what the company is. Now, once again, for disclosure, I know very little about this company, but let's go ahead and go into their website and look at who they are. You can learn an awful lot. And this is what you'd have to do this on your own. Go through here and try to learn as much as you can about the company, what their prospects are. You know, they talk about their assets here, what their growth prospects are, where they operate, what joint ventures they have. They also talk about, you know, recent results, highlights, et cetera, the structure of the shareholder and so on. Now, you'd also want to do things like, you know, go into fund graphs and look at, you know, the financial statements as much as you can if you're a subscriber to Fast Graphs. But the point is, you have to do your own work going forward here because this is not a widely followed company and you're just not getting any estimate data. And that's not something that I'm comfortable with. You know, the company is about $9.7 billion in market cap, appears to have a pretty decent balance sheet. So it's one that you might want to spend the time, you know, looking at. It's got a strong dividend yield of 6.5% and has one of the better historical track records of any I looked at. Now, here's Kinross Gold Corp. Once again, I just want you to notice how volatile, how inconsistent, how cyclical, how unpredictable. Look at this, you know, enormous, you know, I mean, this is a, there's an enormous rate of return that was generated here between the last two recessions, over 46% annualized. But there was also extreme volatility in this during this period of time where you had periods where you know here the stock fell 58 percent so when you're dealing with a stock like this it really takes a special kind of courage and a special kind of insight because once it peaked coming into the great recession i also want you to notice that you would have lost over 90 percent of your money holding it from february of 08 through February of 15. And this is what I mean when I say I just don't find these companies worthy of my time researching because I'm looking for a different breed of company. I'm looking for that consistent grower, the Johnson & Johnsons, the, you know, even the Pepsis and the Cokes, the high quality dividend paying stocks, the Amerisource Bergens, the Ameriprises, you know, companies that give me consistent year after year growth, consistent year after year dividend growth, et cetera. I find these companies it's too cyclical for my taste. Here's Barrett Gold. Now, what's interesting about Barrett Gold, if you look at its long-term performance going all the way back to 2009, this is one of the more famous or popular gold stocks, its performance has really been pretty poor. It's underperformed the S&P in terms of total income. It's underperformed it by almost a third, averaged only 1% capital appreciation and barely squeaked out a rate of return at all. But the point is why? And you can see that that happened because the company had a pretty good run. If you look at just before the recession of 01, coming out here to like 2011, I'm just arbitrarily picking times here, you would have made double digit rates of return and got some pretty decent even dividend income here. But then if you'd have bought it there, enticed by that rate of return and held it for the next 10 years, you'd have lost 7.6% annualized. You'd have lost, you know, 42% of your principal, which is just, you know, hard for a lot of people to accept. And dividends didn't really help you that much either. So these are not for the faint at heart. Here's B2 Gold Corp. Once again, we see you know, inconsistency, no dividend there for a long period of time. The company started to pay a dividend. Statistically, it looks very, very cheap. Okay, the earnings yields over 11%, the dividend yields over 4%, and the, P, the blended PE ratio is less than 10, 8.88. So it looks very enticing. It's not forecast to grow, but if it did at least revert back to a normal multiple of 29, which has been 
you know, this historical multiple, but that's really misleading because that's because of some real high valuations at time. If I look at the normal multiple in shorter time frames, it's down here still at a pretty high 29. But, you know, putting it at a 15-ish multiple would still give you a pretty decent rate of return, but that's assuming it gets back and trades at this multiple. The point is there's a lot of uncertainty in these stocks. They're not, these aren't for the, you know, prudent, you know, person who's looking for consistency and looking for predictability and looking for investments they can count on. You've got to, you know, really pay attention to these stocks if you're going to invest them. Here's BHP Group. Once again, you see a lot of cyclicality, diversified metals and mining. You get the same story. And what you're seeing is the re I think why I don't like mining stocks, because I just don't know how to evaluate them. I don't know how to trust them. I don't you know, feel comfortable that I can get predictability in both operating results as well as dividend income. So I tend to stay away from them. But what I wanted you to see through this video is just what these companies really look like. You know, are they the kinds of companies that you would, you know, be comfortable investing in? And then here's that Polymetal International. This is a different exchange. I believe this is, you know, the same company. But, you know, the point being is that mining stocks are very, very challenging to invest in. Now, there's another group of mining stocks. I'm going to call them the more popular, maybe better known mining stocks like Newmont Group. I, I, I'm going to go ahead. And this is kind of a bonus, if you will. This I'm calling this um, this particular portfolio mining number two. These are some of the bigger, better, well-known names. You know, here we got a 46, almost 47 billion market cap. But once again, just look at, you know, the, the long term you know, performance of these companies. Look how cyclical they are. You know, we got 4.7% rate of return there. If we bought it at the peak, you know, our rate of return then would be, you know, eight tenths of 1%. You know, it just, these are very, very difficult companies. You see dividend goes from $1.23 to 23 cents. You see all this cyclicality in these stocks. They're very, very difficult, you know, to invest in. It, it, it's really that simple. Here's Royal Gold, another very popular one. Now, this company does have a pretty decent dividend record, I might point out. It has a pretty decent, you know, historical earnings growth. It has consistently commanded a very, very high multiple. Sometimes it's better to look at these stocks with things like EBITDA, where you get a little better correlation. Now, this one looks attractive, does have a low dividend yield. It's got consistent growth. It's, again, one of the more popular gold mining stocks. This is one that I could be intrigued to learn more about. But again, the valuation is what, you know, would bother me. From an EBITDA point of view, it looks very, very attractive. From an earnings point of view, it looks very, very expensive. And I, that's why I'd be challenged to basically, you know, ever take a position in this one. Here's El Dorado Gold. I don't have operating earnings, so I will go to either basic or diluted earnings. And once again, I just don't see a company that I can rely on that I feel I could try to predict what the earnings might be. Uh, there's no estimates on this stock again, which is, you know, typical of some of these miners. So, you know, here's Glencore, another miner here that, you know, diversified metals and mining. Just look at the historical records. These are not, you know, what I would call classic buy and hold stocks. You know, here's Franco, Nevada, which is considered a premier gold ma manufacturer in the world. Again, it's got very, very high multiples of earnings. It trades a little more rationally when you look at it based on EBITDA, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization. But again, these are not the kind of stocks that I think, you know, everyday investors should be investing in unless you're willing to really watch them like a hawk, do a lot of research and be nimble, be ready to move in and out. Otherwise, you're dealing with stocks that have, you know, very, very inconsistent historical results, very cyclical historical results. So, yes, Ty, I don't like miners for those reasons, but that doesn't mean, you know, you shouldn't if you're willing to do the work, you know, take the risk and uh, pay attention. There is some, There are some intriguing possibilities here, but they're just not my cup of tea. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival with another subscriber request Tuesday where I did cover the mining stocks, the precious metals. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a little better insight on what these stocks actually look like. If you like the video, pound that like button, help us grow the channel. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Give me a like and do all those good things. I really appreciate y'all and look forward to talking to you again real soon, perhaps with some more, you know, what I would call value 
high quality dividend growth value stocks. I'll be showing you a couple of those tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And by the way, if you haven't done it, you might want to take a look at Fast Grass. It can really provide a lot of insight into the companies that you're considering if you're looking at investing. It just really gives you a perspective that's kind of unique in the industry. Thanks again.